Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am super excited for this video because we're going to be doing indie makeup releases and just talking about the new makeup releases on the indie market, what I'm thinking about them, whether I'm going to buy them or not. This week was rough. <laughs> I feel like the last few weeks were easy. I was like, I'm not going to buy it, not going to buy it, not going to buy it, whatever. And then this week it was like, bam, so many beautiful things coming out. So I did make one tiny small purchase, which I'm pretty excited about. So we'll get to that in a little bit, but this series is inspired by Angelica Nikas and Samantha March. I'll have both of their channels linked down below as well as all the Instagram accounts that I use to make this video happen. So let's just go ahead and jump right on in. All right, so starting off with Mel Cosmetics, they released the She's in Parties palette and honestly, at first when I saw this, I was like, yes, I'm so excited. This is perfect. Like, this is such a beautiful purple palette. And I was very, very tempted by this palette. But then I kept seeing more and more pictures of it. And honestly, I feel like the promo picture, the original promo picture was stunning. But in real life and in more natural lighting, it looks like it's a little bit more of just like a plain neutral palette with a little hint of purple, some browns in there, some like, I don't know, I just... The tones, I could see a lot of people liking, especially if you're more of a, like, mauve cool-toned, neutral-ish lover. I think it could be nice, but for me, when I originally saw it and thought it was, like, this beautiful, stunning purple palette, and then to see what it looked like as more pictures came out, it was definitely a disappointment. So I decided to pass on this palette, which is a good thing because I'm trying not to buy makeup right now. So, I don't know. I wish it would have been perfect but it's not. It is what it is. I'd love to know what you think about this. I also think the packaging is really stunning on this one, but it just, it missed the mark for me. And then next we have two new sneak peeks from Alien Cosmetics, and the first is for the Fairy Frolic palette and is coming in August, and this is cute. I actually like this a lot. I think that the matte tones are very me. Like, I love that there's like a grungy, uh, green, there's a deeper green, a kind of black to deepen everything, and then a mauve tone. So I like the mattes, and then the shimmers all look pretty. I think that I saw them say that some of them are duochromes, so I think it looks nice, but I'm not sure if I would get it because I'm testing out their quads right now, and I just want to form my opinion on their eyeshadows a little bit more before I decide if I would buy more of them or not. And then next, they have another new palette, and I'm actually, I'm not sure if this is going to be a quad, a face product, a palette, I can't tell, but it says sunbathe and soft serve, and I think it's cute. The name alone made me think of Lana Del Rey's song, Salvatore, because it just, it perfectly goes with this, so I'm curious to see what it ends up being, but right now it's just kind of like mild curiosity, not sure if it's something I'm really going to be wanting to put in my collection. So next is an announcement, and this is not a new product, but I just wanted to let you know if you were in the market for the Nomad Cosmetics Harajuku palette, they did have a limited restock, but I checked their website, and it is now available as a pre-order that will ship the beginning of August. So if you were interested in this, I know I get comments all the time from people saying they want this and it's sold out. Just wanted to let you know that it is available for pre-order now. Okay, so next we have a new palette, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. This is from Mayali Beauty. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so please feel free to correct me if you know the correct pronunciation. But this is the Blush Tribe rebrand. So if you're not familiar, Blush Tribe was a small indie brand based in the UK, and uh, I want to say at the end of March, they announced that they were closing down forever. They were done. They had like all of their stuff on super sale and they were clearing out all their stock and like Blush Tribe was going to be no more. And then a few weeks later, they announced that they were actually rebranding, which I feel like is a little odd because it's kind of like, we're never coming back. Oh, but we are kind of like, a, I don't know. It just... I know that it rubbed some people the wrong way and I can definitely see it from both sides that maybe they felt all the support and decided maybe we really can do this but we want to rebrand. But the thing about the rebrand is I'm looking at this palette and it looks like it looks like Blush Tribe to me. I don't know if I'm crazy but other than someone's face not being on the cover I feel like it's a very similar layout. They have so many palettes in that 15 pans and it's kind of half colorful, half neutral, and I don't know, it just immediately spoke to me and said, Blush Tribe. The reason I'm going so in-depth is because I feel like if you're going to shut down and you stop using a name and completely rebrand and be like a whole new business, essentially, 
I just feel like the change in the product would maybe be a little bit more dramatic and I just don't see that here. I'm not like against it necessarily, but I just thought it was interesting. As far as the actual color scheme, it's cute. I like it. It's kind of a little bit of warmth, a little bit of color, but I don't necessarily feel like the urge to purchase it right now. So that's just kind of where I'm at. I would love to hear your opinions on the Blush Tribe rebrand. And then next is from Shea J Cosmetics and this is the Van Life palette. And this is pretty cute. It's, I don't know, I, I like it. <laughs> it looks like it's kind of pastel tones. And then there's two different silver shimmers which look kind of similar. One's a little bit more like whitey silver, one's a little bit more gray silver, but I feel like for only having three shimmers in the palette, I'd like to see a little bit more variety between the silvers, but overall it looks like these would be really pretty more kind of in between pastels and bright shades that would work for a deep skin tone. So I think it's cute, but again, I don't really have the urge. Like I need to go out and buy this one. And then next is a sneak peek that I'm very excited about. This is from M Cosmetics and it is for their Color Drop Serum Blushes, which I've been super intrigued by. The lightest pinky shade I've wanted for a while and... It's always sold out and I have so many blushes in that shade that it's kind of hard to justify the price. So I haven't purchased it, but they're sneak peeking new shades. And this one I'm showing you right now is a lilac and I think it's super pretty. It's a formula that I really wanted to try and I also feel like it's a very unique shade. I can't really think of any lilac blushes in my collection. So this is definitely something I see myself trying. I don't know if I would buy it on launch. I might wait to see how it looks and well I guess there'd be swatches and maybe promo pictures. I'm not sure but this is definitely caught my attention. It's high up on my wish list compared to everything else we're talking about today. So I'm really excited. I've heard the packaging is a little finicky but hopefully I could figure it out. So if you've tried any of the Color Drop Serum blushes I'd love to know if you like them. I think the packaging is so cute. And then next is from Alamar Cosmetics and I'm such a sucker. Like I could not not buy this. This is their new birthday suit liner and lip gloss and I believe that they were celebrating their second birthday if I remember correctly. So they came out with a cool pink liner and then the lip gloss is supposed to be like a light pink with a little bit of blue iridescence to it. The thing is I've been wanting to try Alamar Cosmetics lip liners for a while. They have a lighter, more warm nude shade that I've been wanting to try, but it's always sold out and I just haven't bought it. But when I saw this, I was like, ooh, that is so me. That's a color I would use often. I love a good kind of light pinky shade, but it doesn't look uber pink. It looks more just like pink neutral and I have a lot of lipsticks I think would go really well with that. Then the lip gloss looks so pretty as well. So when I saw this, it was one of those things where I added it into my cart. I looked at it, added the shipping and everything and I was like, oh, I don't need it. I closed it out and then I went back like five minutes later. I was like, yes, I do need it. So I did buy this and I'm excited about it. I already got the shipping notification. So it was definitely a little treat myself moment, which I have not been having very much lately. So it felt good, it felt special, and I love Alamar Cosmetics as a brand, so I'm excited to try this and the lip combo in general, even though I really don't need it. <laughs> it looks like something I would really love. And also the birthday suit lip gloss is supposed to be the same formula as their Mommy Spice Latte lip gloss, which I really like as well. I don't know, there's something about Alamar Cosmetics that I just can't say no to their new releases. I have this slight intuition, a feeling that they're going to come out with cream blushes and I really, really hope they are because I will die. <laughs> it was it was literally the smallest hint ever. It was just Gabby talking about some cream blushes and the way she like talked about it so um, formally, it was obvious that she knew something about formulating cream blushes. And that's what kind of got me like, hmm, I hope they're coming out with cream blushes. So, I don't know, the smallest hint ever. But anyways, yes, <laughs> I'm rambling for sure. Okay, so next is some new liquid lipsticks from Menagerie Cosmetics. And they should be available now at the time that you're seeing this video. So there's four shades here. The shade Animal Cookie looks really, really pretty. But the thing is, I'm kind of hesitant to buy their liquid lipsticks because I had one that I loved. It was called, I want to say it was called Cat Suit. And it fell on the floor and it broke, like the entire container broke and I had to end up throwing away the lipstick because it went bad, because there was air and there was, there was like, there was no fixing it, unfortunately. So I'm hesitant to pay the money for 
more of their liquid lipsticks if the packaging is a little bit faulty. I've seen some people say they've never had an issue, and then I've also seen other people complain that theirs broke as well. So, as much as I do like the formula, I'm just kind of like, nah, I don't know, like, is it a risk I want to take? I'm also really curious if they would do a comparison of all their reds, because I know they have a lot of red liquid lipsticks now at this point, because this new one, Hungry Eyes, looks a little bit less blue and a little bit less intense as Catsuit, but yes, I'm curious what the comparisons would be overall. So for now, that's a pass. <laughs> and then next is a little sneak peek from Drench Cosmetics, which I was not familiar with them until recently. They are owned by Killer King, and this is a palette that's coming soon. I think I actually have another picture of this that I saved, yes. This is the Cosmic Oasis palette, and I don't really have too much to say right now because it's a black and white photo. <laughs> I don't have that much of an opinion yet, but I did just want to mention it because I'm super curious. Uh, they're a brand that I now have my eye on, and I'm hoping that this will be an interesting color story. It looks like, from from how much I can judge it from being a black and white photo, it does look like there's a mixture of lighter and deeper matte shades. It looks like there's a few different shimmers, so that's promising because I hate when palettes have like all the same mid-tone and it's like I just can't do a variety of looks with that even if they're a bunch of different colors. I need depth and I need lightness to make a good look for me. Uh, so I'm excited to see the full reveal of that. And then next we've got some new shades from Beauty Bar Baby and these look so so pretty. So there is purple stuff which tempting. Super, super tempting. I'm trying not to buy singles right now. I'm, well, I'm trying not to buy anything right now. So I'm trying to talk myself out of this one. But this is probably one of the prettiest purple shadows I've ever seen. Shook. <laughs> and then there is Forget Me Not, which looks to be a light blue with a yellow duochrome to it. Again, I feel a little attacked right now. <laughs> And then there is Jewel, which looks pretty. It's, uh, I don't know, it looks maybe like a little bit more of like a bluey purple base with a green to it. I'm not as intrigued by that one. And then there's also Living in Paradise, which looks to be a really pretty bluey teal. Kind of reminds me of a shade that I already have from Terra Moon. So again, not as intrigued. But purple stuff and Forget Me Not. Attacked. <laughs> and then next, this goes for the same thing of trying not to buy more singles, but this is the new Makeup Geek Soft Focus Matte Eyeshadows, and they're available now. They're $5.49 each, and there are six different new shades, and these are kind of just pastel shades, and they do look really pretty. Not gonna lie, slightly intrigued, slightly tempted, but I just, I'm like, no, just don't even go there. You don't need it. You don't need it. My favorite quote, so I'm just gonna wait and watch other people review those, even though they do look kind of pretty. And then next is from Davina Cosmetics, and this is the reveal of a new single, Moonlight, no, Moonlit, Moonlit, coming soon. And I think I mentioned this, um, I did like a little sneak peek of it before, but now it is official, it's coming. I'm not sure of the date yet. It does look like a really, really nice foiled silver, but for me personally... I'm not that much of a silver person, and I've also gotten some silvers recently that have duochromes or just different things about them that make them extra special to where I wouldn't be as into just a regular silver shadow like this. Even the shade Mystic Moon Pie from Davina is a silver with a very base. Like, that is stunning. So I'm more than happy with it, what I already have. So I think unless there's more colors that are coming with this, that this will be a pass for me, unfortunately. And then next, we have a reveal from Glamlight, and these are their new Glamlight Restaurant Wipes. <laughs> and these are $5 each. They're makeup remover wipes. It says they're infused with aloe leaf extract, free of toxins, free of fragrance, um, infused with vitamin E. So they're supposed to be pretty good, and I'm slightly intrigued by these because it's a brand that I like. It's cruelty-free. They're $5. It's not terrible by any means, but honestly, I really only use makeup wipes when they come into my life. I don't necessarily go out and buy them. I prefer to use, like, makeup melting cleanser or I'll use reusable wipes. I'll use, like, the makeup eraser rather than going through wipes and being wasteful. 
I don't buy them on purpose. Sometimes I get them in PR. I actually even got wipes in PR today now that I think about it from Pixie, but I don't like theirs very much. But either way, if I get them in PR, it's like I'll use them, but I don't buy them very often. So even though these sound nice, I don't think I would get them. And then next we have the reveal of the new KL Polish collection, and this is the Sweet as Summer collection. I mentioned it last week with the little black and white sneak peek, and honestly, overall, these are pretty easy to say no to. I think they're supposed to have a jelly finish or something like that, which I think is cool, but overall, they look to be mostly just primary colors, and other than the green one, the Kiwi one, I don't feel the urge to buy any of them. So for now, these are a pass. I could see getting the Kiwi shade. I don't know what its official name is uh, with the two of the shades that I wanted from the nude collection. Maybe next time there's another nude collection, I'll add them all together because I'm just trying to get free shipping, honestly. <laughs> so maybe I'll make a purchase eventually, but as of right now, not a need. And then next is a new collection from Nabla Cosmetics. Uh, I want to say this is like Miami Nights collection or something like that. There's two more new skin glazing highlighters that are in deeper shades. They look like they could be a really beautiful highlight for a deep skin tone or a blush for a lighter skin tone. There's also some bronzers as well, which as much as originally when I saw them, I was like, ooh, Nabla bronzers. Yes, I was so excited about it. I have gotten some bronzers recently that I absolutely love. I have more than enough bronzers. It used to be that I would like continuously rotate them. I was really good because I didn't have that many bronzers, but it feels recently like I'm a little overwhelmed by them, which is crazy because I have way less bronzers than I have highlighters or blush or anything else, but I just feel like bronzer is bronzer. So I'm gonna try and like not buy any more bronzer for a while, especially because it takes forever to go through. So even though I'm intrigued by them, curious to see reviews, could possibly end up buying them eventually. As of right now, it's a pass. There's also a like glitter eyeshadow quad. Ugh, no thanks. And then there's some lip glosses, which again, I just don't really need. So overall, this collection is a pass. And then next there is a new palette. This is the Infinity Glam Palette by Linda Halberry Cosmetics. <sighs> I don't, I, I, maybe this is, okay, <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. So I originally was looking at this as a face palette, not an eyeshadow palette. I'm guessing you could use it for both. And as an eyeshadow palette, it's just kind of like want, want, want to me. But when I was looking at this thinking it could be a blush palette, I was very, very intrigued because I just, mm, I feel like it looks so pretty. Like <laughs> every single shade I really like and I just know I don't need it. So at the moment I saw it, I was like, that's pretty. How do I talk myself out of this one? Because I do really like the colors overall as a face palette. But I have so many face palettes I already love that don't get enough usage. So it's fine, even though it's all pretty together as one. I have all these shades other places. Nothing here is super original or unique as much as I like it together. So I'm gonna not buy that, I already know that. Next is a release that I literally hate. <laughs> and it just, it makes me wanna rant. And I feel like this, here, I'll just show it to you. It's the LC Minimalist palette and it says it's special edition. It's the color palette for minimalist or whatever. And honestly, I feel like this palette just screams. I'm making makeup for people who like color, but I don't even wear colorful makeup because who, why? Like everything in this palette is a shimmer. And if you're trying to do a minimalist colorful palette, like why would you not have mattes? All of their other minimalist palettes are like all in one, everything you need, one palette. And this is just... It's like, oh, let's just throw some color, throw some shimmer, and call it a colorful minimalist palette. Like, this is as far as from a minimalist colorful palette as it could possibly be. I don't even care that the pans are different sizes or whatever. I just, I'm annoyed by the color selection in general. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but I'm, I, the major pass on that one. And then last but not least, I just have one mainstream release that I wanted to mention today, and this is the new Kendall palette with Kylie Cosmetics. I just wanted to mention it because I've seen a lot of people talking about it, thought I'd throw in my two cents, 
And overall, I think it's really, really pretty. Actually, I think it looks nice. I like that it's kind of like the neutrals with a little pop of like the green, purple. It's very summery. I feel like this is like the perfect summer palette for someone who likes neutrals, but you dabble just a tiny, tiny bit in colors. So overall, I think it's pretty, but also at the same time, if you do the little exercise, I'll put my phone here, where you just cover up like the colors that you like, or you could put little black squares on them, then I feel like it becomes very, very easy to say no to. It's pretty. I'll give it that. I like it, but again, I just don't need it. I've had an overall good experience with Kylie Cosmetics in the past having decent quality, but I don't need it. Don't need it. <laughs> And when I cover up just a few shades, it immediately becomes less interesting, so it's pretty easy to pass on. So that is everything for today's indie makeup releases. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have not subscribed already and you enjoy my content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.